Well, I'll um, attempt to do this. Next speaker um, is will be known to many of you, Eloise oh. Ducky, um, who is a creative technologist <laughs> and is here to share with us her work um, at ZKM. Yes. Great. Um, hello, everyone. Yay. Um, <laughs> some of you might know me as Ducky. If you don't know me, that's OK. We can hang out later and be friends. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's why I do these, just to make more friends, because I'm just really bad at approaching people. Um, so today, I'm going to be talking about open codes and your approach to knowledge. Um, but first, I might just tell you a quick bit about me. So originally, I am from the Western Island of New Zealand. Um, <laughs> I really do hope that Tasmania one day goes and joins New Zealand. I just think we'd make a great country together. Um, <laughs> but uh, through a range of events, I now live in Germany, in Karlsruhe, which I really suck at saying, unfortunately. So if any of you are good at German, you'll know that I probably said that wrong. Um, but that's OK. I'm learning. <laughs> Um, yesterday, I also ran the Games and FOSS mini conf. So, if you want to talk games, yay, you can also come and talk to me about that. Um, I feel like it's important to mention that I'm really new to Glam and Open Glam. Um, I generally just come like from this as a software engineer and a web developer. Um, so, it's really cool that I now get to work uh, with these really awesome institutes. Uh, speaking of which, so in my home, there's also ZKM, uh, which is like the German way of saying ZKM. Uh, it stands for Zentrum für Kunst und Medien, uh, which is just the center of digital art and media for those that don't speak German, which I imagine is a few of you. Who here speaks German? There is like <laughs> way too many people here who speak German. That's amazing. Can you come teach me afterwards? Because I'm still learning a lot. Um, and need to work on my pronunciation so we can have good conversations. Um, but yeah, ZKM is this amazing institute um, that does a lot of things. It has, <laughs> like, what is ZKM? It's all of these things, um, or at least these are all the kind of sections that we have. But overall, we refer to it as a cultural institution. Um, so it was kind of founded on these four guiding ideas. Um, the first is about how ZKM is a location for all forms of contemporary art. Uh, it's a platform for cross-border experiments uh, between arts and the performative arts. Uh, research, production and presentation comprise all medial forms and methods, from oil painting all the way through to apps, and from classical composition through to sampling. Um, exhibitions, publications and symposia open up new perspectives and new questions, uh, the objectives of which are the setting of innovative and trend-setting themes. So it's very much on the kind of arts side of glam. Um, the second guiding principle is about encouraging people to just participate and discover art. Um, it like, is founded on this like, really open kind of idea of like letting people in and trying to encourage them in, which I feel fits really well with Open Glam, surprise. Um, it also does a lot of research um, and development, uh, both with theory and practical applications. Um, and it also, it just loves meshing together like scientists and artists, which for me is just really fun because that's always been my background. Um, so yeah, they love just any unusual methods uh, or innovations, and they just like, like seeing if there will be new ideas that will emerge from those. Um, and the fourth one is the conservation of works of art, primarily digital art. Um, that's, that includes like any historic pieces of equipment um, and the construction of a comprehensive archive for the 20th and 21st century arts. Um, so ZKM takes this like, role pretty serious um, as a conserver of cultural heritage, not just like what other people sometimes deem as history. Um, so yeah, they really love digital stuff, which is good, because so do I. Um, one of my favorite things about the ZKM, uh, or favorite exhibits, was this cloud. This is not a photoshopped picture. This is actually a cloud inside the building. Um, so they got together some scientists, some artists, and they were just like, hey, can you make a cloud in this building? 
Uh, and they did, and it was awesome. And they held exhibitions in it. Um, they held a few parties. So you would normally you go up those other stairs or a lift, but they actually built ramps so you could just walk up into the cloud. And it wasn't just other people's computers. Um, <laughs> for those. So that was awesome. Um, and one of the things that was there before I got there, unfortunately. Um, so right now we have tons of exhibitions going on all the time, as you might have been able to tell from our guiding ideas, we like doing a lot of stuff. So right now we have the Feminist Avant-Garde of the 1970s, which is an amazing exhibit about all these fem uh, works from women in the 70s that just like, most of them never even saw the light of day until very recently, which was crazy because they were just so in depth. Um, they've also got residents, 40 years of the Kunststiftung uh, in Baden-Württemberg, which is where uh, Karlsruhe is. That is like one of the kind of states of Germany. Um, the Datum Soria, the return of the real, the art of immersion, App Art Award 2017 highlights, because uh, ZKM is part of running the App Art Awards uh, around the world in many locations. So this is kind of like the highlights of those. Um, Radical Software, the Rain Dance Foundation Media Ecology and Video Art, uh, which I have not been to yet. Uh, ZKM Gameplay, which is one of my favorites for hopefully obvious reasons. Uh, Games and Politics, which is also awesome. And coming up, like opening this Friday, we have global control and censorship, uh, which is a really big topic uh, of conversation in Germany and Europe in general. And I hope it becomes bigger in Australia too. <laughs> Uh, and of course, right now we have open codes. So in case it wasn't obvious from the abstract, uh, open codes is an actual exhibit at ZKM. Um, and it's been running for a few months now and it holds a very special place in my heart uh, as where I started my glam journey. So in October last year, I was hanging out at a hackerspace in Germany, as one does, and someone was like, hey, you kind of like art and you can code. Can you help us out a bit? Um, and so I ended up helping kind of just put some of the sticky bits uh, around making it, holding the exhibitions together. And they thought I was weird enough to keep on. So I got to stay and continue working with them, which is really cool. Um, and yeah, hopefully, Today, I'll be able to kind of communicate how uh, Open Codes, especially as an exhibit, is like, it's called Open Codes. So hopefully, like, that might give away that it's very much about open access. And, and it has a lot of encouragement for collaboration and active engagement with the collections in Open Codes, um, which I found has been extending out to the rest of the Institute in interesting ways that I will remember to talk about. <laughs> Um, so, a little bit about open codes. This is uh, one part of the exhibition. So it is kind of like one of our biggest exhibitions at the moment. It takes up a lot of space, which is awesome. Um, it contains a collection of technology-based art, basically. Um, it's got cryptocurrency miners. I'm pretty sure there's like at least two Bitcoin miners, including one of those like little calculators that kind of prints receipts. That one's not very efficient. I wouldn't recommend making money from that. Um, <laughs> but it's very cute and looks like it's trying really, really hard. And at the end of each day, it's just got like rolls of paper outside of it. It's probably not a very cost effective. Me uh, method of cryptocurrency mining. Um, it's got some artworks about traps for um, self-driving vehicles. It's got robots and there's just like code everywhere. Um, but it's more than this. So those are the artworks in the collection, but the exhibition is actually the like space itself. So as you might be able to tell, uh, it's a pretty wide open space with uh, tables and chairs everywhere. There's, you can't see it in this picture, but you'll see it later. There's like these little booths that are very similar to the green in this room um, with desks and there's power everywhere. Um, and it's just trying to invite people in to like, just be there and hang out. Even if you don't want to engage with like the actual works, you then kind of sit in there and you do your work and you like hang out and you then become part of the exhibit. Um, so as a, it also is talking, like, aims to do a lot of things with education. So we have talks and workshops for all ages, and we regularly have um, 
things on the big screen. Oh, I have forgotten the order of my size. So <laughs> it's very big and these are just all different places. And I'm gonna try and find the image that I was looking for. None of these are it, but they're all very cool and we'll go back through them. Um, so this huge projector here, uh, that's actually one of the works of art. It's called Portrait of a Web Server and it's just running the code for a web server like the entire time. Um, but it's also just a projector. So I think every Thursday we have some sort of meetup group um, come and hang out there and usually they've got talks from around the world. So somebody will be sitting on Skype on that huge screen uh, while other people kind of hang out and talk to them. Um, in this picture, actually, it's from the opening night and all these people around here are, are from the hacker space in the area called Entropia. They also regularly have kind of meetups there and they just bring all of their gear. So they've got some radio equipment that they're testing there. Um, and yeah, because I'm usually with them, we all hang out and invite other people in to come learn about what we're doing and come visit the hacker space and just tell them about anything they want to know, because a lot of the exhibits use a lot of code and need explanations sometimes. Um, one of the, my favorite features as well is people come there for meetings. So even at ZKM itself, we have our meetings in the middle of the exhibition. So we all just go downstairs and it's all very open and people just hang out and collaborate and like people will come and ask us things about the exhibit as we're in our meeting, which sounds like it might be distracting, but usually it's very, uh, it clarifies a lot about what we're doing, which is very helpful sometimes. Um, one of the ways that they're trying to invite more people in and encourage it, other than making it a free exhibit, uh, there is always food, mata, which is like a German hacker drink, um, and yeah, fruit, Mata, coffee, hot chocolates, tea, and water is available throughout the exhibit so that people can come in and just, they don't need to leave ever. We're just trying to trap people, actually. It's, <laughs> we joked about trapping self uh, driving vehicles. Really, we're just a people trap. Um, so on the education side of things, there's a whole area where we have workshops for kids and adults, uh, lots of uh, kind of more industry-related institutes will come in and do these workshops for kids. And as I said, there is code everywhere. And a lot of the exhibits focus on kind of open source code themselves. So that's where I felt the open sourceness fit in really well. Um, so this is uh, just kind of a portrait of uh, one of the other exhibits, I believe. And it's just uh, some... I think it was, I can't remember what it was, I'm sorry. But these are lounges everywhere, so you're always surrounded by something. There is an amazing chandelier that blinks in binary at you. Um, and yeah, there's a portrait of the web server. And if I can find it, this one was pretty cool. You could go up and you'd print out a book for yourself. You would pick the artworks you wanted in it, and then you would get that. Where is the other one? No. This one. So this is actually a bit of a roadblock for the exhibition because it's right at the front and it's the one everyone wants to interact with because it's the first thing they see and also it's very fun. So you stand in front of it and there's some connects that watch you and then there's like four different screens that you like will map out different things. So the one closest to you will do kind of a 3D rendering of you. Um, and then the next one will analyze your uh, gender based on appearance, your height uh, and like your eye color and all of these other things. So you stand in front of it and then you make faces at it to see if you can screw it up or just move your hair to find out which ways you can make your face not trackable. Um, the next one along, uh, it re-renders your like body as you're walking through it um, with Gattaca all through it. So it's supposed to be about DNA and things. Um, and then I think there's also a dot matrix, which just makes a really cool noise when it flips the dots when you go past, <laughs> like in the shape of you. But um, yeah, so everyone loves standing in front of that. Um, but that's, that's kind of like the exhibit. <laughs>
Uh, and yeah, it's just about kind of getting more people in, exposing them to technology and like some of the downsides and upsides of technology. It has several like areas dedicated for audio, there's several areas dedicated to visual, and then there's a whole bunch of things that are just all together. Um, as I said, we have talks, we have workshops, um, and we just encourage people to like hang out at the exhibit itself. I frequently will just, in, like, other than I work there, but I will just invite friends to meet me there rather than going to a coffee shop or going to the pub or anything like that. I'll just be like, let's just, let's just hang out there. It's so much easier. We can, we can still talk, we can still chat, and it's a similar environment, but also there's all these cool artworks that we can go and play with if we want to. So I, yeah, I really love Open Codes and all of the kind of work behind it as well. However, when I was coming here and I wanted to really talk about it, I was thinking about how this would work in Australia. Because obviously this is being held in Germany and the ZKM is a pretty big institute there. Um, and I'm not really sure if we have an equivalent in Australia yet. I'm hoping we do one day. Frequently I tell people that the ZKM is like Mona in Tasmania, but like not offensive. <laughs> <laughs> like, occasionally they like go that way, but not quite in the same way that Mona does it, because just nobody can really outdo David Walsh in that area yet. <laughs> um, so I wanted to figure out like what were the differences and why these sorts of things weren't in Australia yet. And I think a lot of it comes down to money, which I don't understand how it works in this area yet at all. So if someone wants to come and talk, tell me about how cultural institutes work with money, that would be great. But looking around, I'm pretty new to Germany and just German culture in general. When I was in school, I did not do European languages at all other than English. Um, I was just much better at kind of Japanese and Chinese. They just made more sense to me. <laughs> don't ask me why. Um, so, European culture and even history is still feels kind of foreign and new to me that I'm learning about a lot. So I think the first thing I noticed was Germany really like bread. Um, that hasn't featured very much in the ex exhibition though, so it wasn't very useful. Um, but I think one thing I've really noticed is history um, and just like the architectural history that they have in Europe can be really hard for us to emulate because ZKM is in this huge uh, old ammunitions factory, I think. And given the historical context there, they now reuse those things for purposes like cultural institutes. Whereas we don't really have those things. <laughs> this building is older than Australia <laughs> as a, like what we call Australia now. Um, so I think history plays a large part in how these institutes operate in Germany compared to Australia. But I still think that it's possible in Australia and I'm still trying to figure out how to make that work more. Um, also, yeah, I still only speak a, a little bit of German, so I think there's a lot of things that I'm still missing out on and hope to learn. Um, but we do have some really cool things in the future because you can't always look at the past as much as that's the theme of this conference today. Um, the Coding Culture Hackathon is open codes to, uh, related because we are bringing the exhibition to India. Maybe one step further away we'll get to Australia one day. Uh, but out of this exhibit we've spawned this hackathon that we're having in Mumbai where we're trying to get some of the institutes there to release and open their data that then can be used in this hackathon. Um, so I've been doing a lot of work with that and talking to institutes and trying to like explain how to open data and things like that, which is why I was super enthusiastic about Clinton's talk. Um, translating that to cultural institutes will be interesting and maybe we can make uh, an art and library software carpentry. Um, so obviously we'll have new works and after the hackathon, we're also going to be having um, a, another kind of mini open codes in India as well. So moving the artworks around in itself has been really interesting because some of the things that the exhibit in Germany are huge and exporting and importing things to other countries can be really difficult and very expensive. 
So one of the things we're doing currently is working with other technologies and my favorite thing ever, augmented reality, um, to try and bring these artworks to other places. Um, and generally we're using open source technologies because we find that easier. I use that all the time. Um, that's more a, on the technical side of things that I'm happy to take questions on as well. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm also really interested to see how this exhibit has impacted the institution overall and even some of the institutions that aren't in Karlsruhe but kind of around us and have seen how Open Codes has gone because just seeing us move our meetings into these exhibition spaces and engage more and more with the public uh, has been a really interesting experience. Um, that's really all I had to talk about today. I'm hoping maybe you want to ask me questions or if you have ideas about what these exhibits could look like in Australia, I would really be interested because, I don't know, every time I go anywhere in the world, I always want to bring it back to Australia. Um, but yeah, also feel free to come and visit me in Germany anytime. <laughs> I'll show around all the exhibits. Yeah, we got lots of buses. <laughs> yes. Is the space um, like a full time exhibit? Yes. Right. So can so you hold meetings in the space? Mm. Can regular folk come in? Yes. Ah, oh, I forgot so to I mention. That's a really interesting question, actually, that I hadn't thought about, but can now kind of <laughs> on the fly think about. Um, so uh, first up, meetups. Uh, people, there's an actual online form on the site for uh, Open Codes where people can um, ask if they can put their meetup and there's a schedule and slots. So uh, I think I know of quite a few meetups that have taken up on that. Uh, Freifunk, which is like this open internet thing in Germany at the moment. Uh, the local games uh, talk and play meetup is there. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of, I've learnt about so many kind of different things in my town just by hanging out in this space and being like, what's this meetup about? And they'll be like, this thing. I'm like, oh, that's amazing. Like I found out they have a open, it's not about open street maps. It's just about kind of, uh, I can't remember exactly. I think it was about mapping Karlsruhe, but not mapping exactly, just like getting data on all of the kind of shops and just features of Karlsruhe and putting that into some sort of application and making it all open. Um, on the quiet space thing, so the way the exhibit is set up, there is there is these like large spaces that are very open and that, the ones that are very, very open can get a bit loud if people are talking very loudly. I haven't actually had that very much. Even on the opening night where it was actually absolutely packed, the volume wasn't too bad. Um, but we also, and it actually took me a week to discover these, um, along the sides there are these big kind of uh, curtains and I just thought there was a wall behind them but it turns out there's more of the exhibit behind there and there's all these like audio exhibits as well as just some chill out zones with couches um, and you just can't hear anything on the other side which is really great. Um, they also have these office booth things that are like comfy and green and you like go and sit in them. Um, there's kind of some of them that are very similar over in building 11 and Surprisingly, it's very um, sound reducing. So I hope that answers that. Yep. With the um, Open Codes Exhibit, mm -hmm. you said when, when people first walk in, there are yeah. a series of interactive things. Does that, do, they, um, do they save the data at all, or is it just a purely... It's just a purely thing. thing. I think it would violate many German laws if they German did. Assembly. It, they do. Um, some of those pictures were very interesting so I didn't know how they worked, but it turns out they're all non-privacy violating. Um, yeah, no, they, none of that data can be kept because of privacy things. So I will have to double check that now. <laughs> yep. In Germany? The German system 
is interesting in some places. I know in high school they have those three different streams and like one of them go to university unless you kind of veer in. Yeah. Um, as far as I'm aware, not really. I know some people uh, who are in the school system who are learning coding, but it's not a, it's more of a co-curricular activity, not a directly in their system. But uh, this exhibit has actually been doing some collaborations with schools and they did uh, something called uh, open, open urban spaces um, where they had, uh, or digital, digital urban spaces where they had groups. Um, we had a group at ZKM. There were some groups in several other institutes around uh, Europe and every week they would take, answer a question by taking or creating a picture or video and uploading it to Instagram. And like you'd see these faces from all these different places around Europe and share those things. Um, and some of those involved some like robots and coding, but it was, again, it was a more of a, it was a side thing rather than a direct thing in the curriculum. Yep. Um, we've already started, I think, some of the kind of uh, collaborations with some of those that will be moving on in the future. And right now, I can't really say what we're about to do next. Uh, I am hoping we're going to do even more, though. Um, so, yeah, we have started some collaborations and we've even had like some very on the fly things where some of the curators will just be around. As I said, we have meetings down there and then some other people will just be having these discussions. Like I know someone was talking about the Wi-Fi symbol and the kind of um, equations about the Wi-Fi signal and how, and they were like, oh, would you like to do a talk about that here in the exhibition? And the person was just like, yeah, sure. So that's gonna be happening in the next month or so. Um, so there's been a lot of things like that, but also, yeah, there are talks about what we can do after the exhibit closes and maybe it will come back because quite a few of our exhibits have kind of version two. I'll go with 41st. <laughs> um, just how closely do you work with um, people who have sort of traditional grand models? Like curators that have been working on that and what is that relationship like? Like, are you seen as a wizard that is amazing? <laughs> you know, like, are there um, skills we can't imagine or is there this idea that you work quite closely with? Um, we work pretty closely. Um, so my colleague and the person who recruited me, he was actually the science and advisor and like part curator of Open Codes. Um, and they are very like technologically literate as well. Um, they wanted me to join because they like could see that. Um, so like we already have a curator who does a lot of coding and like runs a 3D printing business and things like that. So. Like some of us don't really have a difference between those roles. Um, there are other curators who don't know that much about technology and are definitely more on the traditional glam side. And we have meetings very regularly and we'll pop into each other's offices. It's, I don't think they really see us as wizards. I think they just like, hey, are you able to do this thing or can we do anything to make it happen? And we're like, sure. Um, yeah, that is an interesting question though. I, so far, at ZKM, no, there, there isn't like we're wizards or anything, but I have noticed uh, in some of our overseas collaborations, uh, it's been an interesting experience trying to explain to them, hey, people can do so much more with your exhibits if you release this data and kind of easing them into this process of being like, here, I actually made like a whole document about like releasing, like just making things machine readable and uh, hopefully we're going to get some feedback on that. <laughs> Unfortunately, I haven't met the actual people on the end, but I'm hoping too soon and like find out if it was helpful or if there were other examples. Um, but yeah, so I guess there might be some people who do see us a bit like wizards. I hope not, because <laughs> lots of stuff they do, I definitely couldn't do. <laughs> 
Did you have? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> um, into like making it a little bit portable that way and yeah. with partners to realise that in their place because it's not just about having the description and I was also yeah, that, that really came from you talking about moving lots of stuff and I was thinking why would you be moving lots of stuff why wouldn't you just work with what's there and adapt it to but that was yeah. on the description of the thing itself I don't know yeah, so I guess there's one exhibit in particular that I can think of where it's it's 80 meters long um, and it's called the genealogy of code and basically it goes along this wall um, talking about different stages in code and I think it ends about when an AI beat a Go player or something like that. I don't or it might just be chess. Um, and along it is a railing that has a screen that moves along so that like you can kind of follow along with it. You like it moves with you because it detects when you're there. Um, but that whole setup was very difficult and very expensive if we wanted to move it anywhere. But it's kind of one of the core components of the exhibit. So what we're doing with that is we're still going to kind of have the wall like that can just be printed anywhere. Um, like, because it's just kind of text and things like that. And then we're going to have uh, basically markers on the wall and then people can, we'll have some uh, institute devices, but also people can just take their mobile phones, uh, look at the marker on the wall, and then that will display the same thing that the TV was displaying. Um, I feel like there was more to your question and I just didn't get it though. <laughs> that, that's a really good example. Okay. Question. Excellent. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> and that's, there's similar things that we're doing around other pieces. I think one of the pieces that is difficult is the chandelier that does uh, binary and Morse code because it's a really big chandelier. So I'm hoping that will be recreated some other way. Yeah. Exactly. Actually, we do have a thing that, uh, it's just LEDs that goes around a big pillar because it's a big kind of old factory. Uh, that's the game of life, and that's all open source as well. And I think I've been told I have to stop now. <laughs> but we can keep <laughs>